Paul in Lucerne, California. Hey, Paul, thanks for calling. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV on the Dish Network. What's on your mind? Hey, Tom. I was just wondering, when did Ronald Reagan become such a hero? He was evil. Before Ronald Reagan, our schools taught music. We had instruments for people that couldn't afford their own instruments. We had basketball for people to play basketball. We had the nets. The hoops had nets. We had the best schools in the world, and we had the best educational outcomes in the world before Reagan became president. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why did this guy become such a hero? Well, he became such a hero because of something called the Reagan Legacy Project. And basically what happened was after the Reagan presidency, uh, you know, Reagan's, the, the, the major accomplishment of Ronald Reagan from the point of view of, of the billionaire class was that he dropped the top tax rate from 74% down to 28%. And they wanted us to always believe that that was such a, a, a wonderful, helpful, incredible thing that no one should ever think about repealing the Reagan tax cuts. And in fact, even Democrats don't talk about, other than Bernie Sanders, don't talk about repealing the Reagan tax cuts. And this Reagan Legacy Project was funded by a group of billionaires. One of the, one of the things that they did was basically reinvent Reagan's history I mean, you could read it even, you know, they've even scrubbed the Wikipedia page and things. I mean, the, the, the Will Bunch wrote a brilliant book, Tear Down This Myth, that just deconstructs the Reagan presidency. You will not find that stuff online, by and large. Or if you do, it's really hard to find. It's buried 20, 30 layers deep because these this very deep-pocketed Reagan legacy project, they, they uh, one of their goals was to erect a statue or rename a prominent building in every congressional district in the United States, um, starting with Reagan National Airport, which used to be called uh, Washington, Washington National Airport. So instead of having it being named after George Washington, they changed it to be named after Ronald Reagan, which is particularly bizarre. And there's, a, there's actually a petition drive, an effort here in, in D.C. to get Reagan's name taken off the airport and, and name it after George Washington again. And but uh, but that that Reagan legacy project they they put a, an enormous amount of time and money into creating this mythology of Ronald Reagan and reinventing him in the in the mold that the modern day billionaires want uh, everybody to think of him as. But I I you know I agree with you Paul. I'm I'm old enough to remember the Reagan presidency and to remember what America was like before we abandoned Keynesian economics and and started embracing Reaganism. So yeah, I let's see. You live in Lucerne, California. What have they named after Reagan near you? Nothing. Will. Yeah. Well, they will. <laughs> they will. Paul, I thanks. Sure, but... Yeah. Thanks a lot for the call. But that I'm, I'm telling you, this is how it happened. They they you know uh, I think it was one of one of uh, well it's goes back i'm sure to the greeks but one of one of uh, the the nazi pr guys goebbels or garing or whatever we made the comment that whoever controls the history whoever controls history controls the future and that's the decision that was made by by this group of conservative billionaires after the reagan presidency reagan was in full-blown alzheimer's and they were like, okay, we've got to, yes, this was the most corrupt administration in terms of actual arrests and convictions in the history of the United States. Um, Ronald Reagan sold weapons for six years to the Iranians. He came, to, he came into office as a result of an act of treason. And yet they figured, this is the guy. We've got to create a saint to compete with FDR.